NATO has released a plan to create a military satellite communications network for the Arctic. Western countries have begun to prepare for a confrontation in the northern regions with Russia and even China. As part of a meeting of NATO defense ministers in Brussels, 13 members of the alliance agreed to implement the North Link initiative to create space communication systems in the Arctic using existing commercial satellites. Politico reports, the plan envisages using the services of satellite constellations to create a reliable international communications network for the Arctic. NATO said, the alliance does not control its own satellites, but in 2018, it called space the fifth theater of military operations, and the following year, a special space command center was opened at the American Ramstein Air Base in Germany. The Russian armed forces have stepped up their activities in the Arctic region. In response, the US has begun preparing for a possible military conflict with it and China, which includes the Arctic in what it calls the new strategic frontier, along with cyberspace, the high seas and outer space. In July, the Pentagon warned in an updated Arctic strategy that Russia was engaging in destabilizing actions in the high north against the US Canada and their allies, including attempts to jam global positioning systems, signals and military aircraft flights that are conducted in an unprofessional manner and in violation of international law and customs. The Pentagon also pointed to increased naval cooperation in the region between Moscow and Beijing. NATO members Denmark, Iceland, Canada, Norway and the US have Arctic territories, as do recent NATO members Sweden and Finland. These countries, plus France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Luxembourg and the Netherlands have signed an agreement to develop Northlink. Russia, which also borders the Arctic, has ramped up its operation in the region of late with warnings of jamming attacks on satellites in the area. Russia is fully ready for a conflict with NATO in the Arctic, the country's foreign minister Sergei Lavrov warned recently. We see NATO stepping up drills related to possible crisis in the Arctic, Sergei Lavrov said. Our country is fully ready to defend its interests militarily, politically and from the standpoint of defense technologies, he added. The Arctic is the northernmost point on Earth and includes territory belonging to eight nations. Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Canada, the United States, Iceland and Russia. All except Russia are NATO members. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Friday the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar opened a major opportunity for progress in attempts to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza. Speaking to media at a press briefing in Brussels where Austin was attending a NATO summit, he said Sinwar devoted his life to wrecking the chances of peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. He's finally been brought to justice, and that removes a huge obstacle, he added. Austin said the top priority for the U.S. was the release of the remaining hostages who are still believed to be in Gaza. The hostages should not have to suffer one more hour in captivity. Those who are holding hostages should release them immediately, he said. The defense secretary also touched on the war in Ukraine and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's victory plan. The victory plan is President Zelensky's plan and we're going to do everything that we can and provide security assistance to support the president as he tries to accomplish his objectives," said Austin. It is not my position to evaluate publicly his plan. We have been supporting him by providing security assistance in a major way for over two and a half years, we are going to continue to do that," he added. Zelensky's plan is aimed at prompting Russia to end the war through negotiations. A key element would be a formal invitation into NATO. However, NATO partners have been reluctant to invite Ukraine to join while the war is ongoing. As you all know, Israel yesterday killed Sinwar, the leader of Hamas. That's a major achievement. And it opens a major opportunity for progress. Sinwar was the architect of the October 7th terrorist assault on Israel. His plot left 1,200 people dead, including civilians from more than 30 other countries. And that includes the United States. 
He was responsible for the deaths of many Americans over the years, including more than 40 Americans murdered on October 7th and four murdered American hostages. Sinwar devoted his life to wrecking the chances of peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. He's finally been brought to justice. And that removes a huge obstacle. Our top priority is the 101 hostages still kidnapped in Gaza, including our own American hostages. They have been through hell. And so have their families. And the hostages should not have to suffer one more hour in captivity. Those who are holding hostages should release them immediately. Sinwar's death also provides an extraordinary opportunity to achieve a lasting ceasefire, to end this awful war, and to rush humanitarian aid into Gaza. Again, the Victory Plan is President Zelensky's plan, uh, and we're going to do everything that we can to provide the security assistance to support the President uh, as he uh, tries to accomplish his objectives. Now, what we, we all want to make sure that we continue to do is to link uh, military objectives to uh, strategic uh, objectives, and, and, you know, that dialogue continues. And, you know, I just met with uh, Minister Gumerov uh, today. We talked through a number of those, uh, those uh, things. Again, our focus is going to continue to be on doing everything that we can to support the Victory Plan. Uh, it's it's our support uh, President Zelensky. Uh, it's not my uh, position to evaluate publicly his plan. We have been supporting uh, him by providing security assistance in a major way for the, over two and a half years. We're going to continue to do that.